Hello, my name is Connor Malros and I'm a technical account manager here at AWS. Welcome to a short talk on AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature, where I'll be covering an overview of CAPTCHA, use cases for using CAPTCHA, benefits of AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature, and configuration options when setting up AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature. Before we get started, I would like to talk about AWS WAF. AWS WAF stands for AWS Web Application Firewall. This is our cloud-native firewall that operates by monitoring and blocking HTTP-based communication based on the Layer 7 rules that our customers configured. AWS WAF is commonly used by many of our customers to perform intelligent threat mitigation and is tightly integrated with many AWS services. A few examples that AWS WAF is integrated with are Amazon CloudFront and Application Load Balancer to help customers protect their applications from a variety of Layer 7 attacks. A feature of AWS WAF that our customers love is the AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature, which I will be covering today. First, let's answer the question, what is CAPTCHA? The acronym CAPTCHA stands for, as we can see on the screen, Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. For our use case, we use CAPTCHA challenges that are designed to verify that a human is sending the request and to prevent activities such as web scraping, credential stuffing, and spam. In AWS, you can configure your AWS WAF rules to run a CAPTCHA check against web requests that match your rules inspection criteria and is needed to require the client sending a request to solve the CAPTCHA. This is similar to the implementation of using AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature, where AWS WAF randomly generates its CAPTCHA puzzles, like the one shown on the right, and rotates through them to ensure users are presented with unique challenges. This is just one of the many awesome benefits of using this feature. Additional benefits that come along with using the AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature are the easy implementation of CAPTCHA feature. AWS regularly adds new types and styles of puzzles to, of course, remain effective against automation techniques. When using AWS WAF CAPTCHA, all puzzles include support for screen readers, keyboard controls, and contrasting colors, and as we can see here, it also includes alternative audio-based puzzles for users with visual impairments. As mentioned, with AWS WAF, you can choose when to challenge a user with a CAPTCHA based on multiple factors. For example, you can acquire WAF CAPTCHA challenges for requests based on the rate limit, labels generated from AWS managed rules like AWS WAF bot control, also the Amazon IP reputation list and other attributes such as a URI path, header, HTTP method, just to name a few. This also allows you to configure AWS WAF rules to require WAF CAPTCHA challenges to be solved for specific resources that are frequently targeted by bots such as login pages, search, and form submissions. These CAPTCHA challenges should be fairly easy and quick for humans to complete, yet hard for computers to either complete successfully or complete with any meaningful rate of success. This is why customers commonly use the AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature when a block action would stop too many legitimate requests, otherwise known as a false positive, but letting all traffic through would result in an unacceptably high level of unwanted requests, such as those from bots. To summarize the benefits of using AWS WAF CAPTCHA, it is to keep spammers away. This is done by using CAPTCHA to identify and block unwanted bot traffic to prevent activities such as scraping, credential stuffing, spamming on your site, and more. Good examples of real-world use cases for this would be to mitigate spamming on your site by preventing bots from creating a bunch of fake accounts. Another one would be if you are an online retailer, you can use CAPTCHA to mitigate fake customer reviews. Another one is limit the number of requests a user could make within a short period of time. For example, if you wanted to mitigate scalpers from purchasing up a large number of tickets for resale later. Now that you know some of the benefits that come along with this feature, let's discuss how does AWS WAF CAPTCHA work. AWS WAF CAPTCHA uses tokens to track successful responses to CAPTCHA. To summarize, when a client makes a request without a token, AWS WAF presents a CAPTCHA. When a user solves the CAPTCHA, AWS automatically generates and encrypts the CAPTCHA token and sends it to the client as a cookie. Then, when the client sends a request, it includes the encrypted CAPTCHA token in the request, and as needed, AWS WAF automatically decrypts the token and verifies that it's a valid CAPTCHA token. The token itself will include the timestamp and the last successful response to the CAPTCHA. After a user successfully solves a CAPTCHA, the client requests aren't challenged again until the rule with CAPTCHA action determines that their token has expired. So how long until a token is expired? Well, this brings me to my next topic, the immediate time configuration. As we see here when configuring your AWS WAF rule in the AWS Management Council, 
If you select Captcha Action, then you will see an option for Muni Time. AOS WAP calculates the token expiration using the Captcha Muni Time configuration. You can use the WebACL along with rule level Muni Time settings to tune your Captcha behavior. For example, you can configure a rule that controls access to highly sensitive data with a low immunity time while still using a higher immunity time for your other rules. With this, I would note that solving a CAPTCHA can degrade your customer's website experience, so as part of best practices, we do recommend tuning your immunity time settings in your rules to help mitigate the impact on the customer experience while still ensuring to provide the protections that you want. Now, I will cover a few best practices I would like to highlight when using AOS WAF CAPTCHA feature. The first being plan your CAPTCHA implementation. This can be done by selecting the request where you'll apply CAPTCHA so that you present the puzzles as needed, but avoid presenting them where they wouldn't be useful and might degrade the user experience. This can also be done by identifying requests that you don't want to have impacted by CAPTCHA. A good example, if you plan to have a CAPTCHA check at your login page and the user is always taken directly from the login to another screen, then requiring a CAPTCHA check at the second screen may not be needed as having too many CAPTCHA checks can degrade your end user experience. Next, use CAPTCHA to tune your existing rules. A good example of this is if you have a rate-based rule that blocks traffic but keeps the limit high to avoid blocking legitimate users, you could consider adding a second rate-based rule that has a lower limit and place it in front of the blocking rule. With this, you are able to block automated traffic at a lower rate while still blocking any IP sending more requests than your higher rate limit. If you are blocking requests using managed rule groups, you can consider switching the behavior of some or all of the rules from block to capture or challenge. Our next best practice is to, of course, test your CAPTCHA implementation before you deploy them. As always, before updating rules or implementing new features in production traffic, we recommend to test and tune it in staging or testing environment until you are comfortable with the potential impact to your traffic. Then test and tune the rules in count mode with your production traffic before needed. Now to get started, I'll walk through setting up the AWS WAF CAPTCHA feature within an AWS WAF rule. Here is an example of what you can expect to see in the AWS Management Council when configuring the AWS WAF custom rule with CAPTCHA feature. Here's a drop down where you can select which part of the request you would like to inspect. I mentioned a few of these previously, such as the IP list, the cookies, and the HTTP method used, just to name a few. Next, once you select the CAPTCHA action, this is when you will have the option to adjust the immunity timeout. As we see here, the default is 300 seconds. To adjust the immunity timeout, you can check the box here and input your desired timeout. And if your rule looks good, just click Add Rule. Thank you. Hope this feature overview provider was helpful. And our documentation posted in the description has more details on this topic. Thanks for your time and happy cloud computing from all of us at AWS.